Blessings, blessings, blessings. Blessings, everyone. Blessings. Please share as you come in. This is going to be exciting live. Yes, share, share, share. We got a lot of yes. good revelation for you all tonight. Blessings, blessings. We're still setting up, but please come on in. Awesome. So Mercedes, let's see, turn down your volume on your Instagram. Blessings, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live and our Instagram. We are on both at the same time. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Please share the live. It's going to be a fun and thought-provoking live. We are excited to be here tonight with you all. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Blessings, blessings, blessings. So my name is Tequita Baker, and uh, I am excited to be here with you all today. Uh, welcome to our Facebook Live. Uh, I first want to say that this is not a man bashing live. Okay, this is not what this is. So uh, you can just cancel that thought right now because that's not what it is. I got four brothers. <laughs> uh, and uh, one day I hope to be married myself. Uh, so this is not a male bashing live. Uh, the Lord had really began to give me revelation and insight about the spirit of the warlock. And I'm actually a counselor. So I counsel online. I mentor, I do inner healing sessions and deliverance sessions. And over the last few months, I have had a plethora of women come to me um, and they have been dealing with challenging experiences with men and uh, the men that have come into their, their lives, God has been revealing to me that that is a warlock spirit. And so the Lord actually gave me a word on the warlock spirit. I put it on my Facebook page today. Um, you, uh, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, you'll have to go on Facebook and see it. It is rather long. Uh, but I highly recommend reading the word. The Lord revealed to me that um, he is actually um, allowing uh, women to arise in this hour. He, he has a God chosen, specifically assigned, anointed women who have been in the background, who have been consecrating themselves, who've been really living for him, who really been uh, grinding for him concerning their, uh, their destiny, their calling, uh, bringing forth their ministries and their businesses. And he is really going to highlight women in this hour and in this season. And there is two spirits that is going to come for women to pull them off of their throne. The first one is the spirit of uh, um, uh, the warlock. And then the other spirit is the spirit of, of uh, feminism. And one of the ways that feminism is going to operate is we are already seeing it where this spirit is tends to advocate for the underdog. It advocates for, you know, women's rights, rights of, you know, the less fortunate and things of that nature. Uh, but, um, one of the things that the uh, the spirit does, it it actually also tries to dethrone men or actually uh, usurp and take the place of men. And so, even as uh, women are coming forth, that is not our heart. That that is not who we are. But there is an an unleashing of this spirit of feminism that is being released. That it we're going to have to counterattack and make sure that we are uh, showing ourselves to be distinguished 
language from this spirit so that men know we are not here to take their place. We will never be able to be men. You know, we will never be able to be the coverings uh, that God has called the man to be. Not saying that we can't cover our household if we don't have a man, but there is some things that God has designed for men to bring in the earth that no matter what, you know, we can actually, you know, we can try to substitute and we can do the best that we could do, but we need men. We need them. We need them uh, in, in our families. We need them uh, as fathers. We need them in our communities. We need them as coverings in our household. We need them, uh, you know, in our regions to for protection, for safety, um, to even just aid us in entrepreneur endeavors, to walk with them in what God is calling them to do in the earth, even as they walk with us. And so, you know, the heart of the women that God is raising up is not to usurp uh, uh, men. Uh, God actually said that he was honoring these women because of their hard work, their dedication, their consistent prayers. And uh, they have been constantly just been uh, in their prayer closet before him. And he's actually rewarding them in this season and this hour. And then the other spirit that um uh, we're going to talk about today is the spirit of the warlock. And this is where um, uh, men uh, will come into our lives that may not necessarily be God. Okay. And every man that comes into your life that's not necessarily God is not a warlock. Uh, but when you are a warlock, you will know it. <laughs> and so uh, God said that this spirit was going to come to actually dethrone women and steal their virtue, uh, steal their purity, steal the consecration that they have been living and uh, through and actually been uh, their standards that they have been living through all these years. And even as God will begin to highlight the women and bring them to the forefront, these sneaky, sneaky deaky spirits are going to come in and try to steal the woman's heart to pull them off of their throne of destiny. And so you can read that word on my page. And even as I, we're going to be talking about this book today, there were so many women that was coming to me, uh, dealing with the spirit of the warlock that even like after the fourth woman, the Lord said, you need to write a book on the spirit of the warlock. And I said, oh no, that's not you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I was already writing three books at the time. And I was just like, we, we don't have time to write another book, Lord. Like, I, I was like, that's not you. I've, I've written over 50 books and I don't mind writing, but I'm just like, why would I write about the spirit of the world? Like, I'm, I'm good. Like, you know, I, I spot a devil. What? I could spot a devil a mile away. And, and so, uh, but someone actually called me at, in the wee hours of the morning. They was dealing with this spirit. And I said, Lord, I felt so convicted. I said, I have to write the book. And even the person said, you need to write that book. So I actually did. I wrote that book in five days. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is called Crushing Warlock Opposition. You can get it on Amazon or kingdomshiftingbooks.com. Okay. And so we're going to talk about um, the characteristics of a warlock spirit today. And we're going to talk about uh, the craftiness of Satan. And uh, I have with me today, Mercedes Carr, uh, and I just want her to uh, take a moment to introduce herself before we get started in the teaching. Please, please, please share this live. Go yeah. ahead, Mercedes. So blessings, everyone. My name is Mercedes. Um, I am a part of Kingdom Shifters Ministries, and I'm here with Apostle Tequita to go forth on this topic. Can you hear me on both platforms, everybody? So I am, I am a part of Kingdom Shifters Ministry, and I am actually the leader of Be Thou Made Whole Women's Fellowship. And so I am basically here to give a perspective, uh, just from a woman of God's perspective. I am also coming from a perspective of someone who has dealt with men who have warlock tendencies, um, and just the effect of that, how that can really take you off of assignment, how that can really uh, come for your mandate and your destiny and who God has called you to be. And so I can even, you know, give information and revelation in regards to how I was, you know, delivered from those different types of spirits and entrapments. And so I believe that God has so many things for women in this hour and we are arising. And so because there is such an arising and because God is calling his birthers forth, there are going to be things and people who come forth who are going to try to plant seeds that are ungodly because 
at the end of the day, the enemy does not want us to birth forth what God has placed on the inside of us. So if he can taint it, if he can make it impure, if he can sift it in any type of way, that is what he is going to do. And if we are not aligned with God, if we're not aligned in our purity and our discernment, if we're not hearing from him, it is not hard to be uh, taken off track by a warlock. Um, so it is, I, I'm here to say that smart, wise Christian women can be bamboozled if you are not in the presence of God, if you are not hearing from him, if you're not discerning, and if you're not looking for the enemy, because he is seeking, he is prowling, he is lurking, trying to find who he can devour. So we have to be on our post, and it's time for us to arise, to arise in every area of intercession, of discernment, of worship, of prayer, entrepreneurship. God is calling us forth in every single sphere of influence and atmosphere, and we can't afford to be dating or wasting time with men who are not sent from God or men who are sent specifically from the devil. So we're here to debunk some myths and to expose some warlocks. So I pray that you guys are ready. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, one of the things that I uh, wanna say before we get started as well is when you are reading the book, it's not just talking about the spirit of the warlock. I actually have activations at the end of each chapter that have, helps you to really um, identify this spirit, but also go through any deliverance and inner healing that you need. Uh, also, it helps you to set goals to fortify yourself against the spirit of the warlock uh, so that um, you can um, really uh, have a, a fortification for the, your future, okay? Uh, if you have daughters, if you are over a church, if you are over a leader, uh, a leader of a ministry, if you have women in your midst, they need this book, okay? They need it. Uh, especially those that are single, those that are waiting on their mates, those that have a, a major calling upon their life, they need this book, okay? This book is a game changer for helping us uh, not to get hooked by this spirit. And I know that, you know, some of you all out there are like, no, nah, I'm not going to get caught up. I know some people that have gotten caught up that I would have never thought would have got caught up with this spirit, okay? And so this is nothing to play with. And then, you know, the enemy comes as an angel of light. So you think that you're looking at someone that's from God, and then you're really looking for some, looking at someone that <laughs> is from hell, okay? <laughs> and once you get hooked up with a warlock, it's, it's, it's very difficult um, to just break free from that spirit. And we're going to talk about that a little more uh, today too. So uh, let's get started. Share, share, share. Okay. Yeah. If you have any questions and I would allow you to send them to me through private message. Uh, and then my um, team can let me know if I need to look at my it's my my private message is to um to answer any questions okay that way you can answer whatever questions you ask whatever questions you want and still feel comfortable okay so we're going to talk about the characteristics of a warlock now first i want to say that a warlock is the name for a male witch okay so this is he looked like boo <laughs> But he, it's just, it is the name of a male witch, okay? The definition of the word warlock is pathbreaker, deceiver, traitor, liar, okay? These definitions are der derived from the historical act of foundational warlocks making a pact with the devil while separating from God and religious practices, okay? Mm -hmm. So I would contend that warlocks are lockers, all right? Um, they lock their prey down and hold them in bondage with their clever powers. And if you were actually to, uh, to think about the definition, the word the, there's two words in the word warlock. There is war and lock. The dictionary defines the word war as a act that is actively hostile or contentious. 
It is a act of, of conflict or contest. It is a uh, conflict carried on by force of arms or between nations or between parties within nations, okay? So it is a, a actual fight. It is a battle. It is a struggle. And then the word lock is defined as a, decide, a, a device for securing a door, a gate, a lid, a drawer, or the like in position when it's closed, okay? Consisting of a bolt or a system of bolts propelled and withdrawn by mechanisms operated by a key, a dial, or something of that nature. Okay, so a lock actually locks you down. And then the war, okay, the war, it becomes a battle. That's why a lot of times you're like, is this boo or is this, is this from God? Is this not? And you feel like you're being tugged. You tug this way and then the Holy Ghost tugging you that way. You tug this way because once the, uh, once the prey, the warlock locks its prey down and hold them in bondage, then you begin to go into that war because you having a war between the warlock and the spirit of the Holy Ghost that is in you. And warlocks are very militant then they learn how to operate in their military craft, okay? Um, one of the things that you need to understand about a warlock is that they sacrifice their prey to the devil for more power. So even though there may not be an intentional man that come into your life that actually oper knows that he's operating like a warlock, he, he is still sacrificing you to the devil for power, for control over your life and uh, you, you know, for platform or whatever it is he's getting out of you being locked down to him, whether he realizes it or not, okay? Because a lot of people have spirits and they don't realize that they have them, okay? Then I also wanna say that there are some people that operate in the behaviors of the warlock and may not necessarily be a warlock. So you can experience that too. And I do uh, explain both of them in the book, okay? Uh, but the way that uh, a warlock learns how to, um, um, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Operate in this craft is that he masters it, okay? Mm -hmm. And he masters it uh, so that he can go to, to a certain level or rank of mastery. And so one of the things that you will have about this person is they have dated a lot of women and they are very like, um, they, they giving themselves brownie points for who they can lock in and how they have, have over, gotten over on women and things like that. And, you know, I just got it like that. Or, you know, you hear them making a lot of comments like that, even about other things in their lives, because their, their whole uh, mindset and spirit is to get over, is to uh, co contrive, is to um, uh, manipulate, seduce, and yeah. so that they can have power, so they can have favor, so that they can have, you know, opportunity and on and on and on. Mercedes, I don't know if you want to say anything before I continue. Yeah, warlocks are very patient. Um, they are very cunning. And so even if you think about the, uh, the enemy and how he slithers and how he is a serpent, he does not mind waiting on his prey to get in the position that he needs to get in to attack. Um, it's not always going to be obvious. The warlock is not always going to come right up to you and just approach you. They may be that person that's very cunning and that has a lot of women that are interested in them. And maybe they might be, you know, in a situation where they're like, okay, well, I don't want any of those women. I want you. So the warlock wants you to feel like you're special. You're the prized possession. They want to get you in a position to where you feel like it's an honor 
and a privilege to be seen and chosen by them. So once you get into a place to where you begin, begin to get interested in the warlock, or maybe they're so cunning or handsome, uh, they might display a Prince Charming type um, personality. Once you get into that place to where you show a little bit of interest, that is when they begin to pull on you. That is when they begin to pray to war on you. It might start with something simple like maybe crossing a small boundary, maybe doing something that you know doesn't seem too far-fetched or too out there just to lure you in a little bit more and a little bit more. And then once they have you in their trap, that is when they begin to execute their war. That is when the strategy, the plan, all of those things begin to come forth because no warlock is going to come right out and tell you they're a warlock. They are going to come dressed in everything that you desire, everything that you've been praying for, everything that you told God you don't feel like waiting for anymore because you're too patient to wait for your mate or for your husband. They are going to come dressed as that. And one thing that I want to share, because I, like I said, I have dealt with warlock entrapments. And so I was in a season of my life before I was engaged where I really um, had that desperation to be in a relationship. I really wanted a man. And so I began to speak certain things about needing a man, wanting to be in a relationship, all of these things. You have to watch what you put on the frequency. As I began to speak those things out, there were people, spirits, familiar spirits listening that took hold of that information. And guess what? Pretty soon after that, that warlock was pursuing me. The very one that I you know, was not really paying attention to, didn't necessarily want, wasn't necessarily looking for, I just wanted to be in a relationship. But when you begin to allow your discontentment to speak louder than your contentment in God and your obedience to wait for his plan, you are going to be a prey for the warlock. And so they can literally sense, smell, uh, uh, feel your discontentment. They can see the fact that you are posting on Facebook every day that you want a man. They see that you are posting that you need to have a husband by the time you're 30. They see the desperation and the discontentment and they're saying, okay, yeah, that one. That's one that I can wear down. That's one that I can you know, sift their standards and cause them to come out of what God has said to them because they are not secure in who God has called them to be. So you need to understand that this is not just somebody who's going to try. And then once they try, if they don't succeed, they just give up. Like Apostle said, this is a strategy. This is a war. So if the first thing don't work, guess what? They going back to their arsenal and they coming back with a different DM. They're going to approach you in a different way. And it's so key to know what God is saying to you because a warlock can look just like a Christian man. It can look like somebody who is in the pulpit. It might be a pastor. It might be a prophet. I actually, I, I'm going to let Apostle go ahead, but I have a scripture that is so good at exposing warlocks because it does not necessarily have to be someone who is from the street or who's not living in um, in the church or who doesn't believe in God. Those sometimes are some of the strongest warlocks because they know what's going on in the spirit. They know how to pray. They know how to reach um, different frequencies in the airways. They know how to uh, say spells, how to release curses. And so you just have to be content in what God is calling you to do. You have to know who God has called you to be. You have to hear his voice for yourself because maybe that warlock, they will whine you, they will dine you, they will spend the money, they will spend the time. Now do you it. Are, you, are worth the, you are worth their time because once they get you to the point where they want you, you're not going to be any earthly good. So they're willing to sacrifice everything to get you to the point to where you're not able to fulfill your destiny. That was so good. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Uh, even as you were, were talking about that, you know, one of the things that it's important to note is that a warlock grooms women through their spiritual charisma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so what you're talking about is that spiritual charisma. OK, uh, they appear spiritual as they use their works to seduce women into their webs. Uh, most warlocks do not have an intimate relationship with God and are surface in their walk with God. And yeah. then there are some that know that Bible. OK, mm -hmm. they know that Bible and they know how to work that Bible 
to get you into their web. I've had um, uh, women say to me, well, when we started dating, he was like, I know that um, we're going to get married. So it's okay for us to have sex and, you know, whatever, because I know that you're the one God then told me that you're the one. And so that woman is thinking that it's okay to let her guard down and give up her virtue or her consecration because this man has said she is the one. But you don't got no finger. You ain't got no ring in your finger, you know, or whatever. And so they know how to use that word. And so you really have to be care careful of that. Okay. They can be very handsome or distinct. I just want to give you some characteristics for, before Mercedes give her my description. Okay. They could be uh, handsome or distinct or unique and interesting in their physical appearance or demeanor or character. We all love a fine man. I, you know, I, it just is what it is. I love Thor. And in that last Avengers, I, I, I was traumatized when they made Thor a little, you know, healthy around the waist. I said, what's going on? My uh, eye candy then then changed. I, I just, I, I still traumatized about that. We all love a little eye candy, but uh, we got to be discerning, okay? Making sure that candy is manna from heaven and not, uh, you know, a seduction from hell, okay? Uh, 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 apple from hell, a strawberry from hell. Okay, y'all love y'all some strawberries. Y'all, y'all, I'm getting into y'all romantic stuff now. All right. Uh, they are seductively drawing and alluring and mesmerizing. So yeah. you don't even know why you like them. You don't even know. I just like them. And then, you know, your, your pastor saying, well, what you like about? Oh, no, he just, he just so anointed. <laughs> Yeah, you don't even know. Can't even can't even name one fruit of the finger. <laughs> he, he, he just it's so annoying. He just makes me feel <laughs> so good. Yeah, I bet he does. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, he could be very cunning and crafty. And Mercedes already talked about that. He'll use trickery and deception to lure his victim. So. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he may go to Bible study with you for a few weeks. He may go to, you know, uh, church with you for a few weeks, uh, okay. you know, or whatever. He may say, it's okay for us to have different views concerning our faith and concerning the Bible. He may say that up front because he is trying to lure and trick you and get your guard down so right. that he can release his true agenda. All right. Uh, he may prey on your innocence and your purity. And that's one of the things I had just talked about, how he will twist the word to make you think it's OK. Uh, another one uh, with your purity and your innocence is uh, people, uh, they'll say, and even I hear people saying this in general. Some will say people will say, as long as we don't have intercourse, we're not having sex. Mm. It's a lie, Facebook. It's a lie, Instagram. It's a lie to all those viewers out there who are going to watch this. That is a lie, okay? When you are engaging in any activity, uh, you know, that is sexually arousing you, your body, your soul, your heart, your everything is exalting itself above the knowledge and truth of God. And so when you have that, you have entered into that place of lust and perversion and, you know, or whatever. Ever, and there is no way around that okay and so uh there is no such thing as you know um as long as we don't have intercourse okay if you're if you're even having a if your mindset is what can i get away with you need to fast consecrate talk to your pastor and go before the lord if your mindset is let me see what now what can i do not to it's something in your soul that's 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 alarming and say it's in there tricky that sneaky dinky spirit is in there and it'll get you in trouble okay you want you want to get delivered from the sneaky dinky spirit all right uh i also talk about how to uh, how do you know if you're pure how do you know if you're holy how do you know if you're uh truly sanctified unto christ in this book okay because a lot of people are waiting but they ain't they ain't sanctified they, they are staining but they still got all the spirits of people that they already done slept with. They yeah. still got all the soul ties. They still saying, when I get married, I'm going to do this, this, and that, because they did it in the world instead of saying, 
I want my bed consecrated back into the innocence and purity as if I mm -hmm. never had sex again. And then whatever me and my husband decide to do, as we learn one another, we're that's what we're gonna do. I talk about the undefiled bed because even the uh, the married people have a mindset that they can do anything in the bedroom, but they in the delivery sessions on Zoom with me and I'm casting them them perversion spirits out because you can't do everything okay it's a lot if it's a sin it's a sin all right so you can't do everything that bed is undefiled as long as it is in line and in order with god's standards and principles but god has boundaries yes. he got boundaries and he ain't telling you and your woman to uh or you and your man to go to a sex store he ain't he ain't saying it he ain't telling y'all to watch pornography he ain't telling y'all to dress up like beyonce and whatever her boo name and Y'all, the bed is not undefiled. If the way you you having sexual dreams, your partner having sexual dreams, you committing adultery and on and on. It's yeah. because those spirits. And then if you, what's in your bloodline? So you have to be careful about what is in your bloodline too. What I may be able to do, you may not be able to do. What somebody else may be able to do, you may not be able to do. Because your propensities in your bloodline will not allow that. Get the book, y'all. It's loaded. It's loaded. Okay. Uh, so I just want to thought that was free. That was, that was free right yeah. there. Okay. The, the, uh, the, let's go on to some more characteristics. The, the warlock will seek to steal your purity and your virtuous standards in God. So here you are, you got all these standards. You have decided that how you're going to live for God, how you're not going to do this, 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 and that Mr. Mr. Sly, sexy, fine self come. And you know, and you like, well, I guess it's okay. And you know, you can't, you know, you can't handle it. You yeah. know, you can't handle nobody being at your house at one, one after 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. 10 a.m., 10 p.m. for some of y'all. Some yeah. of y'all need to have daytime dates only, okay? Yeah. You know, you know what you, you got to know what you can handle. And you got to say anybody that makes you feel uncomfortable about what you know you cannot handle, right. that's an alarm. Yep. Okay. Yep. If I'm saying I can't handle that, and you saying, "Oh, you know, you can handle it. It's all right. It's the." Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. I'm watching you because, because mm -mm. mm -mm. you should be you should be encouraging me well, to protect to, my standards. Yes, to protect my purity. Yes. Okay. Um, some hide amongst members and search out their prey. So uh, while others use religious works to draw people to their prey. So we're talking about the warlock in the church. Okay. Not the, you know, I, I could talk about the other warlock another day, the one in the world, the one that, you know, the witches and the warlocks, that real warlock. Okay. But this, we're talking about the charismatic warlock. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they'll use their spiritual gifts. You watching them pray. You like, Ooh, that man can pray. You, you, you he lusting playing, over there. Pray. <laughs> he playing them drums and, and all the girls in the audience done been at yes. his house. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the um the warlock rushes the relationship this is to hook you okay so it's uh, it's two weeks and he already talking about i think you the one it's i think married. god has sent you to you know he's already yes grooming you and he's rushing the relationship he's rushing you to do things that you don't want to do he's rushing you to do things that you don't even know him yet okay so that's a sign um they use this uh, word curses and lures and spells uh, to, to uh, hook the prey. So you want to be careful of things that they're saying to you. And especially things that are belittling you, shaming you, shaming you about your purity, making you feel like you can't handle a real man because you, you know, you don't want to satisfy any of their uh, physical needs or, you know, be at their beck and call and all of these other things that they're requiring of you. Okay. They give gifts to flatter and to draw uh they are uh covenant breakers so mm -hmm. they are not interested in keeping covenant with you or with god okay the and then the covenant that they have you coming into is one that is impure and that is misaligned with god 
they're not truly submitted to leadership to the vision of the ministry or the fellowship if 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 you say i don't know about this let's let's go talk about this with my pastor can we discuss this with my mentor we don't need them we got god we can pray for ourselves and and they never want to meet your mentor they never want to meet your your, your those that you are accountable to they're actually wanted why you always got to go over there why you got to listen to what they're saying why why do we need to involve your pastor and that and that brings you into that place of isolation because it makes it feel like it's you versus them yes so it, they make you feel like you're in opposition to them because you're submitted to god so then that's when you begin to you know get projection where they're like well maybe maybe you actually do like brother so-and-so at church why you want me to talk to him why you want me to get mentored by him? I don't need to be around him. There is a, a literal separation that happens to where you get into a position to where you're going to have to choose. Either you're going to choose the people of God, the standards of God, the leadership of God, or you're going to choose the warlock. And if you choose the warlock, you are going to be in a position to where you cannot break out of what God is uh, trying to pull you out of. And so it is so essential to pay attention to these red flags from the very beginning, because what she is describing is the, the literal definition of a domestic violence relationship. A warlock entrapment, a warlock seduction generally turns into an abusive situation mentally, emotionally, financially. You begin to uh, uh, isolate yourself from your friends, from your family members. You begin to wonder why you're not able to go around the people you used to be able to go around. Uh, they begin to plot friends and family members against you. Your, your aunt, she thinks she's too good. Uh, she, they think they're better than you. You need to just stay away from them. Your, your church members, your church family they don't really care about you they just want to keep you away from me but God said we are supposed to be together everything begins to come in opposition of what God said and has spoken for your life so you have to be so careful when you are speaking or dealing with a warlock because your whole life will get snatched from you before your very eyes if you are not careful and like apostle said they don't want true commitment they don't want true covenant. Once you get in that relationship and they isolate you, they begin to tear you down to the point to where you don't feel like you deserve anybody else. You don't feel like you have any worth. You're not confident anymore. You don't feel like if you left him, you could ever find a husband anyway. So you say, I might as well just stay with him. Everything that God has spent all these years building up, the warlock came to steal. He is the thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will act as a canker worm, a palmer worm, and literally devour and eat up all of those years that you have built and tried to produce purity, all of those years that you have built your standards, that you have died to yourself and began to live for the Lord. The warlock wants you to die to him. He wants you to submit your soul to him. So My that God. he can be your God. So it's real, it's real life and it is, it is not a joke. Can you share your uh, scripture, Mercedes? Yes, ma'am. So I was reading Acts um, and Acts 13, six through 10 talks about a warlock. And it says they traveled through the whole island until they came to Pathos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet named Bar Jesus who was an attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man sent from Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for that is what the name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, you are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? And so what God was showing me is that the warlock aims to separate you from God and does not mind using false knowledge, false prophecy, false teachings, false doctrine to do so. The warlock may also hang around godly people, but they do not bear any fruit. So in this scripture, the Jewish uh, sorcerer was hanging around Christians. He was hanging around those who actually had the Holy Spirit, but he did not have the Holy Spirit. 
They did, he did not have the fruit of God. He did not have, he was not able to bear witness with the spirit of God. The warlock is literally sent from the devil to war against your calling and to entrap you into that lock where they are able to go ahead. They're able to sift everything that is pure, virtuous, holy, righteous. They're able to sift that out of you. It says you are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? So the perversion is huge on the warlock spirit. It says that the warlock spirit it wars against everything that's right. So everything that's in you that is righteous or right, slowly but surely the warlock is trying to uh, change those things, to pervert them just like he did, just like the enemy did in the garden. Did God really say you couldn't eat from that tree? Did God really say you would die? There was a perversion and a twisting of the words of God. And the moment that the woman Focus more on her discontentment than what God said, that is when she fell into the warlock's grips. And we have been struggling ever since, ever since. And so it's so essential to pay attention to the falsehoods. If it doesn't align with the word of God, that is not, that God did not send that man. If he does not align with the standards of purity, the standards of righteousness that God has given you, God did not send that man. We have to stop making the excuse of, well, they go to church or they, they're gifted or they're talented. We have to know them by their fruit and judge them accordingly. Because at the end of the day, when you get locked down and you're warring for your destiny and for your calling and to come into who God calls you to be because you chose to be with that person, you are not going to be able to blame God. Because God will give you clear instructions and clear red flags that it is not him. So if you choose to go forward after you know, then you are submitting to the warlock. And whatever comes after that is then it's your choice and it's your consequence. And yes, God offers grace, but I'm telling you right now, it's a lot harder to get out than it was to get in. So you have to, you have to really just listen to the Lord, be intimate with God, really hear his word, hear his standards for you and refuse to compromise. Do not compromise. You cannot afford to compromise in any area of your life in this season because the warlock will use that to his advancement. Yes, that is so good. I just want to piggyback on what you was talking about with uh, Eve in the garden. We must understand that Satan was the first warlock. Mm -hmm. uh, his craftiness drew Eve from, from the covering of God and from her husband. And as she believes his lies and, uh, um, and his deceptions, she changed the course of destiny for mankind. Yeah. So just think of the power of the woman. Okay. Now, the reason why Satan went off the uh, of Eve is because women are birthers, mm -hmm. and what we carry has the potential to impact all of mankind. Yeah. I'll say that again. Women are birthers, and what we carry has the potential to impact all of mankind. The devil knows this all too well. He hates this truth about women. He has always been after the woman's ability to birth. He's been after her virtue and her seed, yeah. what you birth, okay? This is the reason a warlock tends to use a woman or a child when offering a sacrifice to Satan uh, to obtain power, fame, fortune, and success. He especially uses the woman who is a virgin. And of course, we know that children are innocent and virgins are innocent as well, okay? There is power in your virginity. There is power in your purity and in your consecration unto God, in you reverting back to innocence and into a, um, a lifestyle of purity, righteousness, and holiness with God, even if you have fallen, okay? There is power in that. And the enemy knows that power. And there is ability to birth from a pure well where what you are birthing can impact all of mankind. So just yes. imagine if you're birthing something that is ungodly or unrighteous or is misaligned with God, whether in the spirit or in the natural realm, it's still going to impact all of mankind, but not in a godly way. Right. Okay. 
And so that warlock uh, knows Satan views women in the seed as a valuable sacrifice. Okay. And even if he's not aware that he's a warlock, there's something in him that's drawn to that mindset and to that, uh, uh, that, that perception. Okay. Now, when we read second Corinthians 11 and three, it says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. That word beguiled actually means to be deceived or seduced woefully. And uh, subtly actually means trickery or uh, sophistication, cunningness or craftiness. So this is, uh, it also means good sense or prudence or skill or in, in a skill in undertaking or carrying on affairs. And so this is a skillful art. That, that is being used to manipulate and to seduce you. So you really just want to uh, recognize that and even just recognize your purity and your authority in God um, uh, uh, concerning who you are just as a woman and the power of that, the virtue and wellness of that and how the enemy would prey on your inquisition because it was the questions that he he, 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 pro, he posed questions to Eve, you know, concerning uh, eating off that tree, you know, uh, and, and then she began to inquire and think about it. Hmm. Okay. But you already know your standards. And if you don't know your standards, you need to get you some standards right now. Okay. okay. You need to get this book and look in the and section on standards. Huh? I said, get that one back there with the key too. The yes. Relationship. And this one. <laughs> Keys to, to Governing Relationships by Tequita Baker. Yes. Kingdomshiftingbooks.com uh, and, and Amazon.com because you need to know what your standards are and you need to know how to govern relationships. You need to know uh, what God is saying about relationships and how when we be really, when we are restored in Christ unto salvation and we say that we are saved, we actually are saying that we are willing to uh, shift back into learning how to live uh in the life that we were supposed to have before the fall of man. And so you, you need to know healthy relationships. You need to know what God says about relationships so you can come into alignment with that and come out of alignment with drama, come out of alignment with fantasy, come out of alignment with potential, come out of alignment with things that are gonna sway you from the reality and the truth that God has given you. So if God has given you some standards, don't change those standards unless God tell you okay, I'm changing these standards in this season. Okay, this is the man that I have for you. And these are the standards that I have for you as you were governing in this relationship in this season. But if God does not change the standards, don't change the standards. And don't, don't allow somebody to talk you out of it. Um, and you, and you, especially when you have that war going on in your spirit about him. Uh, Mercedes, do you have any uh, last minute words? That's good. Yeah, everything that Apostle said is just, it's just resonating. I just, I personally can say I would have saved so much time had I listened to God, had I paid attention to the signs. I, I had spent about on and off about seven years trying to get out of a warlock entrapment and the years that it took to really get healed and delivered and to undo those soul ties. It's not worth it. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your virtue. It's not worth your innocence. God has a good godly man for you and you do not need to be entrapped or entangled with another man because you are too uh, discontent to wait for what God is saying. Even if God has not told you who your husband is, if he has not shown you everything that you need to know now is the time to prepare now is the time to begin to ask God what does my mate look like what does a good man look like how what is the blueprint so that when the warlock comes I can compare them to what you have said and I can immediately walk away um, you don't have time to even entertain the thought of it like she said Eve entertained the thought and that changed the trajectory of everything the, uh, the word of God said that as a man thinketh, the, though is, so is he. So those thoughts, those entertainments, those desires, the things that you put your interest in, those are the very things that will snatch your time and begin to lock you down. And so you want to 
make sure that you are really spending this time. If you are in a season of discontentment or you don't know what your standards are, really getting before God and asking him, what is it that you want in a mate? What is it that God desires for you in a mate? And what is it that he has placed on the inside of you? Because if you know what's on the inside of you, you are not going to allow a man that is not in alignment with God to come and steal what God has placed on the inside of your womb. You are going to protect what God has placed on the inside of you. And so God loves you. He has great things for you. Stop listening to that lie that there are not good godly men out here. That is a lie. That is not the truth. God is raising up some mighty men, some men of valor, some men of purity who will wait, who want to live life righteously and who want to do what God has called them to do. So just know and be encouraged that, you know, if you are in a single season that God has you. The work, the work that you're doing now and the wait will be worth it. So do not compromise. That's all, I, that's all I can keep saying over and over again is do not compromise. Don't do it. Don't do Don't it. Do it. It's do worth not it. compromise. Yes. <laughs> I totally agree with her. Uh, we're uh, going to uh, end this live just by praying for you all really quickly. Uh, but we will be back next week for part two and uh, next week we're going to talk about the characteristics of a godly man yeah. and we hope to have a couple of godly men with us who can be representatives of the things that we will be talking about and so we'll be back here next monday at six o'clock with some godly men to discuss well, like opposition. Okay. So join us next week, next Monday at 6 p.m. Also on Wednesday of this week, I will be on with uh uh Prophet Stevenson, uh, uh Prophet Stevens talking about the uh angels of light, okay, soul stillers. Mm -hmm. So join us on Wednesday for that. That's gonna be at eight o'clock, I believe, seven or eight o'clock. Okay, so look for the uh, the flyer on my um, live. I didn't see, I mean, on my Facebook page and on my Instagram. I did not see any questions. Were there any questions? Any questions for Mercedes? Mercedes, can you share a little bit about your coaching and mentoring to women so that if people need help with, with uh, being delivered from the warlock, they, they know where to find you? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I do have a coaching business. It's called Crown by Virtue. And the focus of Crown by Virtue is basically to live underneath the authority and the headship of God's virtue and knowing that there is power in our virtue. And so if you need coaching, I have been mentoring women for about seven years and I also lead a woman's fellowship. So we do have a safe space for you to come and receive healing, receive deliverance, receive extra support so that you can come out of that relationship and come into the fullness of what God is calling you to do. Um, we often discuss boundaries, standards, healthy relationships, how to stay in a good place where you are positioned uh, before God to hear about him regarding your mate. And if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, I definitely uh, do coaching on all things relationships, all things purity, standards, purpose, helping you figure out what your purpose is and who God is calling you to be so that you can walk in the fullness of that. And so on Facebook, I am Mercedes Carr, just spelled like I am on here. Um, Instagram, my name is at Merce Motivates. And then my business is at crownbyvirtue at gmail.com. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You Thank also you. can find myself and Mercedes Carr at uh, kswu.net. Uh, that's Kingdom Shifters Wellness University. We both are counselors yes. and coaches on there. And we do um, deliverance sessions and inner healing sessions via Zoom, face-to-face. -face. Uh, so you can find more information about that as well and about our upcoming webinars. Uh, we will probably even do a webinar on crushing warlock opposition because we really need to be fortified in that so join us next week yeah, all right and, and make sure you get the book at amazon or kingdomshiftingbooks.com this book got mine will save you a lot of heartache a lot of heartache it'll a lot save of you. yes yes a yes of, a lot of time uh mercedes can you pray us out 
Yes. So Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Father God, for even just for the releasing of this book. I thank you for the people who are present on this live today. And we just say, let your presence come upon them even now, Father God, even if there are any who are working with the entrapments of a warlock, Father, we just thank you even now that exposure is here, Lord Jesus. We thank you that every single warlock is being exposed in the spirit and the natural even now, Father God, as we release the words underneath the sound of our voice, we thank you even now that warlocks are fleeing seven ways, Lord Jesus, as you begin to give your daughters revelation regarding what it is that you have called them to do and be in the earth, Father God. We decree and declare that we are arising all the more and crushing the head of the serpent. We will not be those who are begilded by the enemy, Lord Jesus, but we arise and come into the nature of purity and virtue that you have called us to. We come into the power and the divine nature that you are calling us up to any place where our standards are not where they need to be, Holy Spirit, we just say enlighten us all the more regarding who you are calling us to be in the spirit. Enlighten us all the more regarding the men that you have for us and those that you are sending, Father God. I just decree and declare that every serpent's tongue is just being burnt up by fire even now, Father God. These women will not believe the words of the enemy, the sweet, the sweet whispers of nothing that the enemy has sent out in this season to try to rock your daughters to sleep. I just decree and I declare that there is a breaking even now in the name of Jesus. And you are highlighting every single place that needs to be exposed in this season. We break every single entrapment, every seduction, every single place of divination and witchcraft that will cause a drawing to come upon the warlocks in this season. And I just decree and I declare that your daughters, your queens, they see clearly, they see what you are calling them into. They will not live underneath a standard that is not yours, Father God. So even those relationships that are trying to cause them to compromise, we decree and declare that they are breaking out of those relationships even now, that they have a stance and a boldness that is coming upon them to declare what it is that you have called them to do and who it is that you have called them to be. And if their partners or those who are pursuing them don't align, I decree and I declare that there will be a strong conviction to come out of the relationships that don't align with who you are calling them to be. I thank you that we are your birthers, that you have placed so many things inside of us for this season, and they shall not be snatched up by the enemy. They shall not be thwarted by the warlock spirit, by the sorcerer or the witches uh, that have came to steal, kill, and destroy in this season. So we just say, arise all the more inside of your women. Let your purity arise. Let your virtue arise. Let the power of your name arise upon every single single woman that is listed underneath the sound of our voice. I decree and I declare that they are coming into the knowledge of who you called them to be when you foreknew them in their mother's womb. We say, let the restoration of their purity come forth. Let the restoration of their healing come forth. Let the restoration of their obedience come forth as they come out of the place of desiring things that are not like you. We will not be like Eve. We will not be deceived by Father God, by the things that look good, but uh, have no earthly good for us. We will not be deceived by the things that appear to be uh, pleasurable, Father God, but they are not eternal and they don't last. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that we're having a yearning. Oh, we long for true, pure love. We long for your virtue. We long for your standards. We long to be the women that you have called us to be. So restore us back to the place that you have called us to live in. Restore Restore us back to our virtue. Restore us back to the place where we are pursuing you and you alone. And from that place of pursuit, you are beginning to download the standards. You're downloading the ideas of the men that you have caught, the man that you have caught us to. You're downloading, Father God, every single visual that the women need to keep their eyes fixed on you, Lord Jesus, to even trust that you know our desires. You are not a God that is going to give us a whack man. You are not a God that's going to send a warlock. You have great things for your daughters. So I just say, let a fortification come around them all the more. Let your keen discernment arise in them all the more to where they can spot a warlock or an ungodly man from miles away, Father God, because your Holy Spirit is awakening inside of them. Oh, so we just say, awaken, 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 Holy Ghost. Oh, and cause your presence, Lord God, to bring an enlightenment and an understanding 
understanding like never before. So we thank you and we honor you and we bless you for the women that are present. We bless you for your queens. We bless you for your birthers. We bless you, oh, for the generations and the legacies that they are holding inside of their wombs even this moment. And we thank you that the thief has no authority over what you are doing in and through them. So we just seal each and every one of them up decreeing and declaring that it is so in Jesus name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, in Jesus' name. And we just uh, come against any fear, fear of just uh, uh, allowing yourself to get to know someone, fear of uh, allowing yourself to let someone into your life or fear of uh, just uh, falling. We cancel that and break its power right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree that even as this word is penetrating and bringing revelation and insight that you will get the book and you will continue to fortify yourself. And then uh, you will have the tools and even the keen discernment to know dark darkness from light, to know God, a uh, godly man versus an uh, ungodly man, to know a man that is for you and a man uh, that is not for you. We just decree that right now in the name of Jesus. So we cancel all fear. We decree even healing to old wounds, old wounds of trauma concerning the warlock, old wounds of trauma concerning unhealthy relationships, uh, abusive relationships, even ungodly uh, 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 sexual interactions that you have had in the past. Uh, we decree healing to those areas right now, even healing to those areas where people have took it, taken advantage of you, taken advantage of your virtue. And so there's a wall there where you can't even really disciple uh, a godly men from ungodly men. We, we cancel and break the power and the curse that came in through that trauma right now. And we decree that trauma is being healed in you right now in the name of Jesus. It is being healed and made well in you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And you are shifting to a place of peace of knowing that you are God's daughter for such a time as this. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. And you hear his voice clearly and another voice you will not follow. The inquisition, inquisitions of Satan, you will not follow. The deceptions of Satan, you will not follow. I decree that right now in the name of Jesus. I decree a bold conviction coming up on you in your your spirit man and in your inner man that you will listen to the alarm of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you will listen to the alarm of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. When Satan is speaking and you will know, yes, yes, that the liar, the deceiver is near. Yes, yes, yes. And you will cast those voices down. Yes, yes. And you will exalt the standard of the Lord that he has given you for your life. So I decree peace over you even now. I decree a greater level of healthiness concerning who you are as a woman and a queen of God and who you are as his chosen shifting forward for such a time as this. We say, queens, take your place. 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 Take your place. We just seal this prayer decreeing that it is so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will see you on next on Wednesday in Mercedes, and I will see yes. you on next Monday. Until next time, ship right now. Ship right now. <laughs> Come forth, Queens. Yes. <laughs>